Welcome to Ottawa Eats, I'm your host Tom Schock and we couldn't do a show like this without going to a pub. You know, that place where everybody knows your name. You gather with friends, hang out, have a couple of drinks, watch the game, and of course, you're gonna get something to eat. And when you come to a place like this, Berryman's Pub, which has a handcrafted sign, should be some sort of clue that they're all about quality. And quality is definitely what you're gonna get here. Let's go inside. We're at another fine Ottawa establishment. It is very fine, by the way. It's almost artistic with all the stuff on the wall. I like to say fine, classy fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is Mark, and you are the owner, operator, curator of this place? I am indeed. I'm, I'm one of three owners, but I'm the, I'm the sole uh, owner operator. Okay, well, first of all, tell us uh, where we are, where people can find you, both physically and online. Okay, we're in Centertown at uh, 478 Bank Street, right uh, just up from uh, 417 Queensway. Mm -hmm. Uh, our website is uh, theberrymanpub.com. Pretty, Pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so tell us a little bit about this place because when people drive by or if they're walking by and they're going, oh, it's a pub, but it's more than just a pub, right? Uh, more than just a pub. I mean, I, I, I'd say I grew up watching, uh, watching Cheers. Right. And uh, sort of a, a, the failed athlete I was, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I started working in, in, in pubs when I was uh, 14, uh, being a busboy and then dishwasher and prep, prep cook and so on. And I sort of like the idea of uh, what I used to see, the, the regulars coming by and, uh, and chatting with uh, the barkeep. And uh, I thought I'd create a little bit of that if I could. Nice. So you fancy yourself a woody or more of a coach? Uh, well, I don't want to age you here. No, no. So. I, I, I try to think of myself as a Sam Malone, but probably not okay. as good looking. <laughs> all right. Well, I, I didn't want to go all that way. So I guess I'll be your norm or Cliff. Which one do you think I'll uh, be? I'll give you a Cliff. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I'm a creepy mailman. Perfect. Creepy. Like oh, <laughs> creepy nice. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, so tell me a little bit about the philosophy behind this place. I know that, uh, I mean, you have some great stuff on the walls. All kidding aside, I mean, there's yeah. some real history here. Uh, obviously a great place to, to watch the game when you're coming down here, but what's, what's the extenuating kind of philosophy? Well, one place? of the things we, my, my partners and I, we thought about when we were building, we thought a lot of uh, the sports pubs or sports bars or whatever you want to call it, they put uh, uh, frame photos of Gretzky mm -hmm. or uh, Lafleur or, or any of the hockey greats and they're signed and they're all official. Uh, and we thought, uh, let's make it a little more local. So um, most, if not all of the photos on the wall are uh, related to uh, uh, one of our family members, one okay. of the three owners uh, from the Tommy family of uh, Tommy and Lefebvre right. fame and uh, the famous ski family uh, and football family. Uh, there's Jed Tommy on the wall there who played for the Tiger Cats. Um, there's uh, Randy Tommy's, uh, Randy Tommy's my partner, his grandfather who uh, played for the Ottawa Rough Riders and won the Grey Cup for them. Uh, there's my grandfather uh, um, fishing over there. Nice. Uh, my grandmother riding a horse over there. Uh, my grandfather hunting over there. Our, our third partner, Charlie Sesick's father, playing football over there. So you're like a, it's like a family album. Almost. Yeah, it's like a family okay. album. Like I said, there are some there are some photos that don't relate to our families, but they're few. There's my father playing cricket in England up there <laughs> as well. So we've got a little bit of everything. So, okay, yeah. so nice. So it's like a family pub. It's a real sports kind of atmosphere as well. Great place to watch the game. Great place to get beer and For of course sure. great food. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, we pride ourselves on on our, our food. Uh, a lot of people have told me that they feel that uh, our pub is a little more upscale than uh, most pub food, mm -hmm. and I'd have to say that's. Without sounding snobbish, I'd say that's probably pretty accurate. Awesome. Well, we're going to invade your kitchen. Is that cool? That's great. Yeah. Awesome. Come take a look. Okay. Let's do it. How's that? Here we go. <laughs> this is the man in the kitchen. This is Dad. Nice to meet you, Tom. Three letters in his name, just like Tom. That's why I like you already. Uh, real quick, where'd you get your training and why are you here at, in this pub? Um, I originally got my training at Cordon Bleu in uh, Ottawa, the okay. Ottawa branch. Uh, it's an international branch. You may have heard of it with Julia Childs and all this stuff. There was a movie about it, so <laughs> uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, and yeah, and the reason why I came here is, uh, you know, when you think of uh, Cordon Bleu, it's like really, you know, frou frou, uh, yeah. high class training and yeah. stuff. But uh, coming to this pub, uh, what this pub is about is, you know, 
we're trying to make everything from scratch. Right. So uh, we grind our beef in house. We for our burgers, we make pizzas from scratch with the doughs and everything. All our sauces, all our uh, salad dressings, everything here is made from scratch. Okay. So uh, that was one one big thing that uh, you know brought me. To right. This place. So it's a pub. You can still come here with the guys or girls, watch yeah. the game, have a beer, but the food you're going to get is quality food. Yeah. It's, it should be hopefully better than <laughs> uh, what you get at, at the, the other pub down the street, if you will. All right. Perfect. So what are we making today? Look, what are we starting with here? Uh, we're going to just start with pulled pork. Okay. Uh, that's one of our special things right now. And, and another thing that we're doing over here now is we're trying to go gluten-free, as gluten-free as possible. Okay. So what not, not a lot of people know is that pulled pork is braised usually in beer, okay. which introduces gluten to it. So today what we're doing is we're going to just start with, off with some pulled pork. I'll give you some uh, nice examination gloves, sir. Ooh. <laughs> Fancy. Okay. If you want to just throw the pork into the uh, yeah. the big oven just, tray there. Just throwing it in? Yeah, just throw it in there. Help me with the paper. Ah. Okay, I've got some pulls, uh, some spices that we've mixed up. If you can just throw it on top. How much? Just all of it. All of it? Oh, yeah, all of oh it. Okay. okay. That is quite a bit. We'll open it up a little bit here, too. Okay. And what we do then is, uh, before we get the pork ready, we just, you know, rub all the spices in. Okay, if you want to finish off that rubbing for yeah, me, get sure. the spices in. What we'll usually do then is we'll keep the Massage pork up. in the uh, uh, in the refrigerator for just overnight. Okay. And then the next day we'll go on and do the bracing part of it. Okay. Okay. Is that when people are making uh, pulled pork at home? Uh, some people have said that it's important to tenderize the meat. Do you find that that's the case, or just more just leaving it like this overnight? Well, uh, putting in the rub actually will help to tenderize it a little bit. Okay. The spices going in there, and also just leaving the pork in the fridge, pretty much. Uh, that's there's a process called aging. If you leave it for a couple more days the meat will actually relax by itself. And then also the cooking process of it, cook it for like longer, low and slow, if you've probably heard it before, right. will actually right. uh, make it a lot more tender than any tenderization gotcha. process. Sometimes I age my lunch by leaving it on the counter. <laughs> Works very up. good process, yeah. You're yeah, a chef in the making. Good. Hospital knows me very well, actually. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that to the side because okay. with TV Magic, we have a pulled pork ready in the oven. It's been braising in wow. the uh, oven for over six hours. So as you can see, the meat just falls apart. That's ridiculous. Yeah. So we just take that out, we let it cool down, we portion it off, we throw away any like parts that are a little bit too charred and stuff on it, okay. and uh, that's how we get our pulled pork ready. Do you ever drink the juice? Uh, we actually keep the juice on the side, and we use the juice to make uh, one of our sauces. But do you ever drink the juice? No. Be honest. No, I'm We're friends. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't drink the I juice. I might rub it on my body at night, but I don't <laughs> drink it myself. Yeah, it's not for drinking. Okay. Okay, so. I'm just going to move this out of the way now because Perfect. I have some pulled pork ready to go over here. Excuse me. That looks awesome. Okay. So I've taken some pulled pork that we've already prepared, put it into a uh, pan here. I'm going to crank the heat. If you can just grab that sauce over there. Okay. Just hit it with some sauce. How much? Oh, as much as you like. Okay. And I'll leave you with these tongs and you oh. can do some cooking. Oh, God. <laughs> While you're doing the cooking, I'm just throwing some buns into the oven getting them prepared. My mom would be so mildly proud. <laughs> Not gonna lie, it feels like the gloves are kind of melting onto my hand. <laughs> well, you can take the gloves off at any time, actually. I wouldn't be a good cook, I don't think. <laughs> All right. Okay, okay, that looks good right there. Okay. It looks nice and warm. So I'll just shut her off there. And I, like I said, I had some buns that were going in the oven. So those buns are nice and warm. And the way we finish this one, is we'll have the pork on the bun. I've got some cheese here. Once I'm done here, if you can throw the cheese on top for me. Yeah, sure. We'll melt it onto the pulled pork. Okay. There you go. All right. How much? Do you like it cheesy or not? I just throw it all on there. Okay. Yeah, some nice aged cheddar. It doesn't mess around with the portions. <laughs> I like that. So then all we're doing now, everything's nice and warm, everything's ready now, we're right. just melting the cheese on top. It's a nice aged cheddar that we have here, so okay. uh, not your luncheon specials or anything. Gotcha, yeah. okay. Good. Shred it up here and uh, ready to go. See, it should be almost ready. It doesn't take too long for the cheese to melt. I'll just pull that out. Whoops. There you go. Get some nice toothpicks in there. There you Hopefully. go. And get it away from the raw meat stuff. Another thing that we have too that uh, I didn't mention earlier is that we do, like this is just a regular bun, it's a sun-dried tomato bun that we have made uh, actually locally in Ottawa by uh, a bakery, Bagel Bagel, give me a discount. Um, 
and yeah, nice and fresh buns, but we also have something that's made for us as well. Uh, it's a gluten-free bun. If you can feel it, it's actually very nice and soft. <laughs> a lot of gluten-free buns, what, uh, what happens is just they're very powdery when you try to right. eat them. There's very little stretch to it. So uh, this is actually probably one of the best gluten buns that I've seen on the market. And uh, we can also uh, substitute gluten-free buns for any of your sandwiches. There you go. Thank, okay. thank you for letting me touch your buns. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs>
So I'm just going to grab this spatula over here. And this burger has already been grilled. Beautiful grill marks. Nice and done. Okay. And I'll let you finish this burger off for me, if you will. Okay. I'm just going to grab a sauce from down here. The gloves are off. <laughs> Woo! Okay, we have what we do here is instead of just mayonnaise, we have actually a um, roasted uh, roasted garlic aioli. Okay. Uh, with a couple of herbs inside, so just again a little bit different from your norm. Right. Uh, so we have also again our buns too are again made by um, Bagel Bagel. Okay. Local bakery in town, uh, and yeah. So if you can just throw that on top, I've got some dressings on there for you. Does it matter if I use the spatula? Can I? Yeah. So you fancy? don't want to burn yourself. Oh okay. right. Good call. Safety first, everyone. And does it matter with the order and how you put the condiments on or anything like Not that? Not really. It's up to okay. you. What do you, we, what do you want in your burger? Everything. Everything? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Can't get the sauce out. I'm ruining it! That, I'm ruining it! I'm breaking you everything. You can never ruin it. You look like a mad scientist over there. On there, and that's it. That's it. Okay. So you bun on top, and we have a nice big burger with a big. <laughs> that's decoration. Oh right. Decoration. Oh, that's sort of like when they put the sauce on the plate. Exactly. <laughs> Beautiful. And that's it. Where's the fancy toothpick? Do you put one in there? Well, if you really, really want to. Let's put several. <laughs> there we go. That's Again, a lethal burger. The mad scientists at work. Yeah. All right. One for your teeth. There you go. And Perfect. that's a burger. There you go. Pizza. It's a Canadian staple, safe to say, but it's not a traditional Canadian dish, but this is your Canadian version of a pizza, correct? Yeah. Yes. That's okay. confusing, but I think I we'll all follow Our Canadian along. version of a Canadian pizza. Yeah. Whatever. Sure. It's okay. fine. It's fine. People so, get it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, unlike other uh, uh, places, we uh, we have our standard uh, uh, Canadian pizza, you know, toppings. We'll have right. our sauce, our mozzarella cheese, our mushroom. But then where we switch it up a little bit is instead of pepperoni, we have chorizo uh, sausage. Instead of bacon, we have pancetta. And instead of uh, a last uh, topping of mozzarella, we finish it off with some uh, Parmesan cheese. Okay, very cool. Nice. So, okay. Um, and again, this is dough that you make here? Yeah, in-house, okay. from scratch, pressed out, uh, all done by hand. So if you ever come here and you get a pizza that's not a perfectly round circle, that's because it's all made by hand. Okay. So The imperfections in perfection. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of tomato sauce here. Just going to slop it on. Now, a little trick about putting out uh, tomato sauce evenly is your pan will usually spin, so if you just spin your pan around, you can actually spread out the tomato sauce oh, cool. right to the edges, and you have a lot more control. Instead of just trying to stay in one spot and pushing it around like that, yeah. just spin your pizza Give around, a little spin. and there, the sauce is done. If you okay. want to finish it off for me, the next thing is okay. mozzarella cheese. Okay. How much of this do you put on? Just sure put it all on. All on? Yeah. You're a guy that just doesn't mess around with portions, <laughs> eh? Do you want to hear a funny story about pizza? I would love to hear a funny story about pizza. We're all going to go into my childhood and learn why Tom is a little messed up. So when I was a kid in kindergarten, we had this um, this teacher. She said, okay, today we're every, everybody's going to make their own pizza. I'm not originally from Canada. And uh, quite honestly, I didn't know what pizza was. So everybody made their pizza, much like we're doing right now. Everybody got to choose their own topping. Nice. I was done my pizza. I had all my beautiful toppings. I'd hand selected. And everybody was done and ready, and I had my beautiful pizza in front of me, and I took a big bite. And the teacher said, <laughs> you have to cook it first. <laughs> I had no idea that you had to bake the pizza. And uh, I was ostracized for quite some time, but I learned very quickly what, what pizza actually was. My mother actually made pizza based on uh, a mustard sauce, too. That's awesome. So, yeah, it was more of a pie. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Are you saying interesting because it's weird, or are you saying interesting because I wish you would get out of my kitchen and hurry up with this pizza? <laughs> no, I, I'm saying interesting because if you go around the world, it's, it's fun. In Canada, what we think of pizza is, is uh, tomato-based sauce pizzas, and around the world, especially even uh, if you go to Italy, for example, it's usually not tomato-based. It's usually olive oil on, uh, on a thin dough. It's uh, right. what we consider as uh, flatbread. Right. So, uh, yeah, there's... Many, many ways of doing pizzas all around the world. This is just the Canadian way of doing pizza. Okay. okay. So after you've... That's, actually, that's really nice. Yeah. Ah, preserve that for future. By the way, your 
Your hands smell delightful after. <laughs> You're gonna be doing that all day now. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm driving. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna throw that in the oven there. Uh, we have a nice piece of oven here, convection oven, blowing all the heat around. Okay. Uh, it usually takes around seven minutes to finish off a pizza, but we don't have that time. So again, yeah. TV magic. I have a pizza We've ready. We discovered that we should do this for TV magic. <laughs> okay. Okay. So here we go. Fully prepared Very pizza. Nice. Cool. And then. Would you like to do the honors? Uh, I think you should because it's sharp. <laughs> Actually, that's a probably a good idea. We don't have the insurance for that, let's be honest. So then you can also hear that uh, we do our pieces as a very thin crust, and yeah. we try to make the crust nice and uh, crunchy. So as you can cut it, you can hear a little bit of crunch going on. Yeah. And Wow, very cool. Canadian pizza. So that's the Canadian, but there's more than just the Canadian on the menu here, correct? Yes, we have nine pizzas in total. Okay. Uh, my personal favorite is the chicken bacon pizza. Right. Very, very simple. It's just tomato sauce, mo uh, mozzarella cheese, and chicken and bacon. Okay. And that's it. So, uh, right. so whenever you're making pizza, if you're making pizza at home, is there a, a method to what you do with the actual dough? Um, like do, you, do you want to make it thinner or do you want to make it thicker? What's, what's the best way to do this? Because you have your standard kitchen oven, you don't have your convection, yeah. some people. Uh, in a home, uh, uh, like at home, if you're making it at home, I would recommend going with a thin uh, crust. Anytime you go with a thicker crust, then you, you add more variables in there. So right. then, for example, if you put the toms in, if the toms are a little bit too moist, then the top of the pizza will be very, very wet and you may have uncooked dough as a result. If you go with a thin pizza, uh, it's a lot, lot easier to cook. Okay, there you go. So. The beautiful Canadian pizza. A. Eh? So here we go, the finished product. I made all of this, by the way. I saw you. Yeah. I saw you make it. Yeah, mm. it was impressive. Uh, first go around. Yeah. It usually yeah. takes a little longer to train yeah. people. But, I, uh, uh, you're, a, you're a quick learner. Oh, my resume is in the car. I'll bring it in. All right, right. Okay. Right. Uh, <laughs> but this is, uh, I mean, this is great pub food, really. Um, it's simple, but it's it's really good, and quality is something that's really important to you guys, obviously. Yeah, uh, quality and uh, in-house, you know, things are made in-house from the, the pizza dough to the, mm -hmm. the home-cut fries. It, it's, it's pretty important uh, to me. Uh, frozen food is easier and cheaper, but uh, people come back for the quality. Right. Definitely. Okay. I mean, and this, and this is what people are going to get here, and they're going to get a chance to watch the game and the great atmosphere and all that kind of stuff. But this, this place here on, on Bank Street is not your only, uh, your only establishment. You have another one. It's not too far away, just a hop, uh, skip, and jump. Yeah, a few thousand kilometers away in uh, Paris, France. Uh, yeah. We've got a place called uh, the Great Canadian Pub, which is uh, very similar to this, um, with a nice patio overlooking um, Notre Dame Cathedral mm -hmm. on, on the river in Paris. Right. So, uh, it's nice, yeah. nice little secondary business. Not a have. bad little side, side <laughs> venture. <laughs> Perfect. Well, uh, we're a little far away to go to Paris to try any of their food, which I have been there, by the way. I had the poutine. I had to. Yeah. Uh, uh, one of the only Paris. places uh, yeah. in Paris, if not the only place you can get good poutine. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we're not there. We're here. So which one of these should I try? So the burger, pulled pork, or the pizza? Which one am I doing? Um, we'll go for the pizza. The okay. Pizza, that's, uh, yeah. All in, right. In-house recipe. Okay. I'm going to take this. I made this, so if I... Get poisoned for well, any you reason. Needed, I'll sue you needed the dough. Uh -huh. You're good at that. Oh, I like that. That is amazing. I'm a good cook. That's good stuff, yeah. You want to try a little uh, spicy oil on that while you're at okay. it. Okay. All right. There you go. Berryman Pub, right here on Bank Street. This is Ottawa Eats. This is the guy who runs the place. That was the guy who helped us out. And I'm the one who's eating. Cheers. Thanks for, thanks for watching. That's a lot of oil. I'm going <laughs> to fold that up and make that into Greasy. a pizza. Yeah. Hmm. That's awesome. Can I just take this with me? You can. Yeah, we got it to go box. <laughs>